abuse and cruelty and many ways to save a person. In the book of There are many ways to explore issues of abuse and cruelty and many ways to save a person. In the book of poetry, A Penny Saved, we're going to learn how a woman can be saved through poetry. My next guest, poet Arisa White. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Tell me, of course, the, the title is a play on words, obviously. Yes. Tell me who is Penny and what is Penny's problem? Okay. Um, well, the book is actually based on the story of Polly Mitchell, who was uh, held captive in her Nebraskan home by her husband for 10 years. During that time, they had four kids. And in 2003, she escaped. Um, and I was in New York at a time house-sitting for a friend. And I saw her on the Larry King show. And one of the questions that Larry King, Oprah, asked was, why did you stay for so long? Um, besides the fact that her home was, she was captive. She, the wil windows were nailed shut. The doors were bolt bolted in. Um, Everyone wondered this question, why? Why for so long? And I, too, wondered that as well. Growing up in the presence of domestic violence, it was a question I often asked regarding my mother, like, why did you stay mm -hmm. in the relationship for so long? And so Polly's story became an occasion for me to create this book, it, a way for me to shape that question into poetic expression. and. In having a book that's inspired by actual events, one of the key things I had to do was um, change some of the facts in order to make it my own story so that I just can have my imagination go wild. So Polly became Penelope, and Penelope's nickname is Penny. And um, while thinking about titles, I really wanted to do a play on a penny saved being sort of that um, age old adage of, you know, save your pennies for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. um, and just sort of playing with the idea of even of spirituality, spirituality and religion as well. Um, and then also thinking about me as the poet sort of coming into the situation and creating this character who I imagine not having a voice and then giving her one, um, as well as the children, as well as the house is personified and even the voice of the husband. And that was challenging for me in particular as a writer to kind of step into a persona that was so aggressive, abusive, and male, and sort of thinking like, as a woman, how can I inhabit that voice? Mm -hmm. um, so it was really exciting to, to work on this. Uh, it took me six years and a lot of sweat and tears and growing mm -hmm. up to come to this place of really being able to take this story and hold it without judgment. Mm -hmm. Because that was the biggest thing, is to not judge the characters I created. Did you come to a different place with respect to how you felt about what your mother had been through during your childhood years writing this book? I mean, yes. is there is there some of your mother in Penny? Yeah, there's definitely some of my mother in Penny, some of me in Penny. Um, uh, it, it's, it's interesting because there was a point where in 2006 I got really excited. I was just writing, writing poems, and I just came to a place where I just stopped. Um, I think I got caught up on the language, just really fascinated by the seduction of words. And then I realized that I was writing from a place of judgment, um, from a place of recognizing that I actually thought that this woman had no intelligence, that women in sort of these extreme situations are caught up, caught up in whatever kind of intimate relationship where there's violence and abuse is, you know, I question their intelligence. And so I, for me, I had to do this deeper mm -hmm. um, excavation of why. Why do I think that? Why? And, and it instantly came back to my mother, my relationship to my mother and the lack of respect that developed as a result. And there was that sadness, too, because I want to believe that I love my mother unconditionally. But mm -hmm. things happen in life that questions that unconditional love and really test the ability for me to right. have that open heart. And so in the end, I, I came to realize that relationships are hard. They're complicated. We're constantly making compromises. And 
there's this point where you do kind of sometimes cross that line. And when do you know when it's safe? Like, when it's unsafe, when do you go? When do you right. stay? And you're constantly negotiating the, the answers because you're always, you're changing with that. Um, so I, I think I got to this place of just really being more open. Mm -hmm. You said that at times you would, through the writing of this poem, mm -hmm. question the intelligence of mm -hmm. quote unquote women like this. Did this allow you to maybe somehow, well, I once heard one of my favorite college professors say that you only grow up when you learn to forgive your parents. Yes. Uh, did you learn to forgive your mother a little bit through this? I did, oh, you, yes. did you become less her daughter and more just another woman? Yes, definitely I did. And it was, and it's also going through relationships on my own. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in my early 30s. I, I went through different relationships in, in my 20s where I really thought like, oh, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with this woman. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And we get into those hard places where all of a sudden I'm like, oh, hey, this is pushing up against my values. But then I had to question where did those values come from? And, and so it, it was just, I think it was my own growing, my own opening up my heart and not trying to be like the perfect daughter or mm -hmm. the perfect girlfriend or the perfect woman. Um, that allowed me to kind of let go of all of those mm -hmm. sort of chains. I think they're just like the way in which we can get sort of tethered to these ideas and mm -hmm. perceptions of who we are and who we should be in the yeah. world. So how do you write? I mean, every poet I've ever known, myself, I, I write poetry, not professionally, but uh -huh. I've never heard anyone who writes poetry say they write it the same way. I've heard creativity <laughs> from I have to be alone, or no, I have to be in a cafe. No, mm -hmm. I have to see a visual image. I have to get a word. It has to be a certain form. What, what for you is the spark of your creative process? It has to be something like really interesting foremost. I think I like really um, sort of traumatizing situations. So the situation <laughs> is what draws you yes, to your poetry. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, situation that's extreme hmm I want to write about that mm -hmm. um, and so from there it's it, it's often a question that will lead me to whatever that poem is um, or something that sparks me or hits the particular sensitivities <clears throat> I have in the world um, and from there I just start to imagine words will come to me first sometimes um, a line will just write itself, I write it down. I'm always honoring whatever comes to mind. I have a notebook near me on the coffee table. I'm writing it in my phone. Um, but I often need a lot of quiet uh, time. Uh, and my girlfriend has definitely been kind in allowing that <laughs> for me. Um, and I have to write longhand. Um, I first start off uh -huh. in a journal. Um, because the writing process is an emotional process for me, so I have to feel it through my body. Well, and it's tactile. Yes. Yeah, and then I, I mean, I'm waiting for a new generation of iPad <laughs> poets to come around, but I don't know. I, I like the pencil, even versus me a too. pen. Me too. It's the texture of it, too. Like, sometimes, yeah. you know, it's the rhythm of the, the, the pen or pencil moving on the paper also creates the rhythm of the poem. So it's, it's a way for me to have a not-so-intellectual experience with my writing. Right, right. Um, in our last few moments, if someone wants to learn more about you, your work, and your upcoming work, where can they go online? ArisaWhite.com. Thank you. We've been speaking with poet <laughs> Arisa White. I'm David Perry. You've been watching 10%. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.